The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. I'm Suzanne Shanali and here we are joining you today with a brand new program called Mindfulness of Modern Days. I feel like talking about this topic is very necessary at this moment because a lot of people are going through dismays and hardships right now. The country is not in a good position. People might be going through emotional or physical traumas right now. And I feel happiness is something that we all are looking for right now to keep our minds and hearts at peace. So to discuss on this topic, we have a very special guest, Greg Jacobson, who is a world-renowned author, and also Greg is the world's leading quality of life strategist, and also specializing in emotional fitness and relationship building. Greg, thank you very much for taking the time to join with me thank on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's All great right. to be here. Good to have you too. And I believe that you have a lot of experience in you know, coaching entrepreneurs, coaching businesses, even individuals in this area of that sort. And you're also the author of Think Yourself Happy. Uh, to start off this discussion, I really want to know what inspired you to write this book. And you have a really nice backstory. Why don't you tell our audience about it? Well, I also want to clarify something. I'm not a coach at all. I'm a mentor. And the difference between a coach and a mentor is a the greatest athletes in the world have coaches. They're already excellent at what they do. So what a coach is there to do is, is look at them closely and fine tune what they're, what they're doing correct and make it perfect. What I do is I help people with strategies that they're unfamiliar with, that they aren't great at, and I give them new perspective on how to look at things and how to approach things. Uh, and I help them navigate life so they don't uh, step in any difficulties, if I can help it. Okay, that's great. So Greg, what came up with this idea of think yourself happy, and how did you get into that? So I, was, I go to a lot of seminars, and I learn, I'm, I'm really a learning addict. I love learning, uh, especially strategies that will help me in the future. I've been doing this since I was 15 or 16 years old. I realized that I wasn't the happiest person in the world, I was kind of an angry teenager, and I wanted to learn the skills and strategies that would make my life fantastic in every way. So what I did is I took the only shortcut that there really is in the world, and I didn't know it at the time, which is finding people that are outstanding in the areas that you want to be outstanding, finding out exactly what they did, and then taking the same path that they did, or taking the same steps to achieve the same success, which is critical in life. Otherwise, you get trial and error, and, which is very painful. You try something, it doesn't work. You try something else, it doesn't work. You try something else, it doesn't work. And hopefully you learn from these things. But if you can just learn what does work, why wouldn't you just follow that? That makes a lot more sense. So one day I was at, at an event, and there were about 150 people at this event. And it was in a place called Santa Barbara, California, which is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. It's ocean and sand and sun and the weather is great and there's islands in the distance. It's just truly magnificent. And we had a beautiful view of the, the ocean and a pier and it was a sunny day and there were literally jump, dolphins jumping out of the water. It really couldn't be any better. And the room was filled with about 150 people. Most of them were young and good looking like yourself. And uh, my wife and I were some of the older people in the room. And this was maybe, I, I would say, probably 10, 10 plus years ago, something like that. So the, the person that was running the event, the, uh, the coordinator, I guess you would call him, the facilitator, his, he had homework for everybody for the night. It was a four-day event. So the, the question of the day your homework was life is, and you need to fill in the blank. So that's pretty easy homework. So if you could do your homework in one question, that's, that's a pretty, pretty amazing thing. So we came back the next day and everybody was excited to raise their hand because I guess most people didn't do their homework when they were in school. So he, he, the facilitator asked, okay, life is, and asked everybody to raise their hand if you, if you had an answer. 
So I was eager and I put my hand up with nearly everybody else. Uh, and uh, it's unlike Sri Lanka, people don't seem to raise their hand here and, and say what's on their mind. But in America, people are eager to say whatever's on their mind. So the first person was a, a, a girl and maybe she was maybe in her early 20s. Now, I want to preface this by saying in Santa Barbara, the people in the room were from a place called University of Santa Barbara, UCSB. And they're, they're well-to-do kids, they're intelligent or they wouldn't be able to get into the school. They're good looking in a beautiful place. They have their whole life ahead of them. Uh, they, they have it going on. They're, they're really in an amazing spot, in my mind. So the, the girl in the front row, he calls on her and she he says, life is, and she said, life is disappointment. Yeah, I had the same look on my face. I was thinking, no, life is not disappointment, but everybody has their own filter of, of what their life is through different, how they grew up or what they're thinking at the time or their health situation or their expectations or, or what have you. So who might argue with that? So I'm raising my hand, anybody else, anybody else? And he looks at me, I'm like, yeah. And he, and he says, life is, and I said, life is friggin' awesome. But I, I didn't say friggin', I said the, right. the, right, right. the, the okay, other word, it. right. <laughs> so, and I probably wouldn't say that on TV. So uh, he says, that's too broad. And I thought, well, why is disappointment not broad, but this is yeah. broad, and anyway, whatever. So anybody else, but people raised their hand. So there was a, a, another lady back here and, and she raised her hand, he calls on her. And she says, life is sadness. I'm like, what is going on here? And I start feeling like, am I in the twilight zone? Is, am I in a, in a different place than other people mentally? Although I've been purposely living my life to the way I want it for decades. Other people, I guess, just aren't doing that. They're just, life is just happening to them, not for them. Exactly. So he said, anybody else? Somebody else raises their hand, and a, a guy over here raises his hand, and uh, he life is, he said, waiting to die. And I got this cold, just like I have now, like goosebumps. I got cold chills and bumps on my skin thinking, what is going on? Like, I am living in my own bubble of life with my friends, having a great time and an amazing quality of life. And there's people around me really in sadness and disappointment and in, in despair. And in that moment, I knew I had to do something because I had learned these skills over literally decades of how to live an amazing quality life and really enjoy life that was missing around me. And I, I had an epiphany that this is what I'm called to do at this moment. I'm being called by the universe or God or whatever it is saying, Greg, you really need to do something about this. It just felt this deep burning desire that this is the most important thing I could do in my life is to help people understand that there's strategies to being happy. To being happy. Happiness is not something you're born with. Some people are, are more positive than others and more cheery than others, but to really learn the skills of happiness is what you need to do to be happy. It's strategies, it's just skill sets. If you learn these skill sets and do these certain things, you'll have happiness in your life. And what I mean by happiness isn't whistling and skipping and smiling and laughing down the street, ha ha ha, life is so great, life is, that's not what I mean. What I mean by happiness is truly being happy with who you are, enjoying who you are, liking yourself, liking what you're doing in life, and the people around you. Another one is environment, where you are, but that's not as important as the other three. And we see this because Nelson Mandela and so many people were okay in prison, they were happy. It wasn't the best environment, but they weren't blaming anybody or complaining about being there. They had a purpose, and they were learning and growing and becoming a better person in spite of their environment. So when I, again, when I say happy, is this, it's an internal calmness. It's not worried about what's coming in the future. It's not angry about what's happened in the past and how you could have done things better or different and kicking yourself, beating yourself up. I should have done this, I should have done that, or blaming other people. 
it's their fault, it's their fault, blaming the government, blaming your neighbors, blaming your family, or complaining about things, oh, I, I wish things were better, I wish things were better, without taking any action to make them better, or excuses, the reason things aren't good for me is because I'm not old enough, because I'm not smart enough, because I'm not rich enough, because I'm not tall enough, because I'm not good looking enough. I'm not enough, enough, enough. And I think that's where people fall short. And so I decided to write this book. And I wrote this, basically this manual, I mean really fat, like encyclopedia manual on how to get from unhappy to well-being to happy. And it was, it's a journey, it was a journey book. And it was maybe 150 or 200 strategies on how to get to where you wanna to get to. I brought this to my editor and she said, Greg, I gotta say this book is brilliant. It really is amazing. There's only one problem. No one's gonna read it. Because it's a big book? Because it's a big fat book. People just don't really even read anymore and if they do, they want something that's easily digestible that they could open up to any page that it feels like you're talking to them and they can instantly take some actions on this and improve their situation. If you can do that, that would be a much better book. I mean, you, I'll print this the way it is. I'll do the edits and, and make it as good as it can be, but it's not gonna be what, what you'd like it to be. It's not gonna have the effect that you want it to have. I said, all right, so I'll go to the, the drawing board. She said, if you can make like, instead of 150 changes or 100 changes, make it like 10 changes or five changes, and then people will be able to take action on that, but really give them the, the juice, the, the most important parts of this not all the extra stuff, the stories and all that, that does, that's irrelevant. And so I went back and I asked for guidance from a higher power and I read through my book again and I took out the, the pieces that I thought were critical to people's lives. If you really want a better quality of life, do this. If you want a better quality of life, do that. And they build on each other. It's not, you have to do these five. It's just if you do one of these, it will be better. If you do two of these, it'll be multitudes better, three even more, and four even more, and five even more. If you can do these and actually work them and make it simple for people to understand, we'll get some, some traction. So that's what I did. It came down to five changes in thinking that will improve your life. And I've got incredible acclaim from not only critics, but my mentors who were, to me, really like on a, another level. And then they, I reached out to them and they became my peers and became my friends over time, which I recommend to anybody. People that you admire in life that are out there aren't untouchable or unreachable or unlike you in any way. They started the same as we started. So why not reach out to them and tell them how they've inspired you, how they've changed your life, how because of them your life is better and let them know and they'll most likely reach out to you as well. All right, Greg, now after your story, listening to your story, I'm getting so many follow-up questions, but before that, we'll okay. have to go into a short commercial break. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to this special presentation, more like the new program, which we are uh, calling it the Mindfulness of Modern Days, and we are in discussion with Greg Jacobson, and I think you gave a very good backstory as to why you wrote this book, and something which I picked on was, you told me that there are so many miserable people around us, and it's just not there, but uh, in Sri Lanka as well, I'm experiencing a, a interacting with a lot of people who are going through hardships in life, and they don't feel that life is a gift anymore. They are just running through it just like they're going on a rail track, you know, just because they have to live, they are living it. What can you say is the right definition of happiness? How can people find their own happiness? Because each person's definition can be different. Sure. 
because some people might like materialistic things, some people might like traveling, some people is just a relationship, or some people is just a simple word of saying thank you or sorry, I appreciate you. All so, of those things are important. Exactly. And so what is, is there like a universal definition of happiness and is there a way that we can find our own happiness? I think you nailed it. I think everybody has their own definition of what's important to them. And I think the answer is clarity. Clarity on what you want in life and what's important to you. When I work with my mentoring clients, my private clients, first thing I ask them is what's important to you? What, what do you want in life? What would you like to see happen? If you had your perfect life, what would it look like? Your perfect day, your perfect week. How would that feel? What would that look like? Where would you be? Who would you be with? And you know they just don't know the answer. The, the answers that I get back are always, I don't want this and I don't like this, and that's not what I asked. If you focus on what you don't want, you'll receive more of what you don't want. You need to get clarity on what you do want, what's important, and then start taking steps and using strategies to fulfill those desires. And happiness isn't about desire. I don't want to, anyone to misunderstand that it's desire or pleasure. It's, it's none of those things. It really comes down to relationships. What I've found from working with billionaires or world-class athletes, gold medalists, professional singers, professional athletes, the gamut, you know, uh, top executives in business. The most unhappy people are the people that don't have high quality relationships. I think people misunderstand happiness for stuff. They, they want more things and they think that happiness is an external thing that once I have these things that are outside of me, then I'll be happy, but that's not how it works. Happiness starts the other way, from the inside out. So the best thing to do is to take the relationships that you have right now and make them as good as they can be. Because I work with not only people with means, but I also work with people that are janitors and tuk-tuk drivers and cashiers at the store. People that don't have a lot of money that couldn't afford someone like me to, to mentor them. But I, I've committed to this. This is something that I do. When people come into my life, they come into my life for a reason. And I, I take it as a responsibility to help people when I can help them. And I've found, speaking to people, that the, I speak with not only unhappy people, but happy people as well. And what it takes to be happy. And it's being part of a group. It's, it's having people in your life that you can count on and that count on you. You have to be part of that process as well. Looking forward to things in the future, you had mentioned vacations, and a lot of people say, well, I would love to take a vacation, but I just can't afford it. And maybe you can't now, but you certainly can in five years. Anyone can. So figure out what it is that you're looking forward to, and then look forward to it for five years. You get joy in the process of waiting and anticipating in a positive way things that are coming in your life. If you're the most important thing in your life, if you have a picture of yourself on your lock screen and your phone, I think maybe you're missing something. There's more to life than just you. And if you think that you are the most important thing in life and there's nothing higher, or bigger, more important than you, you're gonna be disappointed. It just that's how it works for everyone. Uh, again, I work with top uh, actors and actresses, and musicians that you would know, even here in Sri Lanka, and they are not the happiest people in the world because the world seems to revolve around them. And other people put them in the spotlight, say, you're so important and you're so important and I love you so much and they, that they don't even know. And then they go home and they're alone. They don't know how to deal with the person in the mirror. They haven't experienced uh, strategies on how to be happier in, as an individual. They're part of something bigger and people love them just because they're famous. And, and we know that just because you're famous or rich doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be happy. And, and I'm, I'm part of that as well. I, I thought at one time that money was the most important thing. I had a $350 million business that I walked away from because I realized that my 
priorities were completely wrong. I had forgotten why I was in business, which was for my family and my friends and my freedom, and to grow spiritually and get more education and, and be part of contributing to the world, to my friends, to my community, to the world. I wasn't doing any of that. All of my time, my focus and my energy was caught up in how do I not mess up my business? How do I put in more energy, get more out of my business, get more profit and be a better businessman? And I would learn, that's all I was interested in was learning that. And I would go home and I would be a stranger to my family, a complete stranger. I, I knew my kids, they knew me, but we didn't have a close relationship. My wife was there, but I wasn't there. I was always at work, seemed, I don't want to use always, I was most of the time at work, working 120 hour work weeks, which is ridiculous for anyone. And I was, when I was home, I wasn't present mentally and emotionally because I was thinking about what could I have done better? How could I uh, be more prepared for tomorrow? What's coming up that I need to focus on so I don't mess that up? while I was messing up everything else in my life without realizing it. And I think people have a tendency to get involved in, I need to provide for my family, that's the most important thing. If I'm a great provider, then I'll be a great father and I'll be a great husband and I'll be a great citizen. And that's not, that's just not true. Something which I got confused on was when you said happiness is based on the relationships that you have with other people, whether it's healthy or not. but. Are you saying that one cannot be happy if they don't have relationships with people? Like, how can you find happiness within yourself? Well, one of the relationships that you need to be outstanding at is the relationship with the person in the mirror. You really have to be your own best friend and advocate and champion yourself. I think so many people walk by a mirror and they go, God, you look terrible today, or God, you're looking so fat, or your hair is thinning or you're getting wrinkles in your face or just some negative thing. And that's a problem. That's really a problem. So you start with a relationship with yourself. You, be, you start with being kind to yourself. Start by seeing the positives in yourself. What's good about you? And a lot of people say, I don't know what's good about me. And That's come true. on, think about it. You know what's good about you. And if you don't, ask your friends. They'll tell you what's good about you. Ask your family, what's good about me? Tell me some things about me that are great because I really can't figure them out. And that's a really sad, depressing spot to be. And I'm not saying that collecting friends is the most important thing. The more friends, the, the happier you become or uh, you need to have very close relationships with a lot of people. I think if you have one friend in this world, and you can count on them and they can count on you, that's enough. It truly is. And if you have two friends or three friends or a small group of friends, I think that's fantastic. That you can count on each other and support each other and say kind things to each other. And do your best to be the best friend that you can be. Not to talk behind their back or cheat or you know, be the best friends with your spouse if you have a spouse or a significant other. Be a great friend to your sister. I think that, that there's a lot of that missing right now. And I think social media has really changed the perspective of people that it's the amount of friends, not the quality of friendship, but the number of friends that's important. So young kids will look and they'll say, I only have you know, 40 friends or 200 friends or, you know, but these people have hundreds of thousands of friends and I want to be like them. And they look to them as if they're uh, on a higher scale. But I know social media influencers and they're not necessarily the happiest people in the world either, so. Greg, I mean, I'm just so glad that we have four sessions to continue on like this and uh, this is all the time we have for the first session. Wow, went fast. It went fast, definitely. But I'm definitely looking forward for the second session as well. I think our audience is also looking forward to it. And this is a topic I feel that it's 
necessary to be spoken right now, especially when the whole world is at dismay right now. Again, Greg, thank you very much for joining me on thank the show. Thank you as well. Appreciate you. Thank you. And hopefully, I'm looking forward for the second session as well. Excellent. And that was our first session on mindfulness of modern days. Look forward for the second session as well. We'll be back next week again at the same time. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.